I'm Molly Galbraith, co-founder and owner of Girls Gone Strong, and what I want to talk to you about today is a huge misconception among women who want to look better, feel better, and change the shape of their body. A lot of women come to me and they say, I want to lose weight. But I think what most of these women are really saying is, I want to lose fat. And this is a really important distinction. When you focus on the scale as your only indicator of progress, you don't actually know what you're losing. You don't know if you're losing fat, if you're losing muscle, if you're losing bone mass. So it's really important not to rely on the scale as a sole measure of your progress. Now, a lot of people say, throw the scale out the window. And if it makes you a crazy person, then I totally agree. It's absolutely not necessary to weigh yourself on a regular basis. However, it is data that can be important for telling you what's going on in your body. For example, if you do weigh yourself and you weigh the same, say one week and then two weeks later, you weigh the same again, but you've also taken girth measurements and those measurements have decreased, well, you've most likely lost body fat and gained muscle because your weight is the same, but your body's actually getting smaller. And that's the really cool thing about lean mass or muscle versus fat mass is that five pounds of lean mass takes up significantly less space than five pounds of fat mass. Because I know you've heard muscle weighs more than fat, right? Well, that doesn't make any sense because five pounds of muscle weighs the same as five pounds of fat. The issue is that muscle takes up less space. It's more dense than body fat. So five pounds of muscle takes up less space than five pounds of body fat. On the screen, you're gonna see two pictures of me. One is from 2004 when I weighed 185 pounds, and the other is from 2012 when I weighed 183.5 pounds. There's only a one and a half pound difference in those two pictures, but my body looks drastically different. And that's because I had lost significant amount, amounts of body fat and gained significant amounts of muscle. So if I just used the scale to measure what that progress looked like, it wouldn't look like I had made much progress at all, but my body looks drastically different. So how do you measure your progress then, aesthetically at least, if you're not just focusing on the scale? There's a couple things you can do. Again, you can measure the scale weight if it doesn't make you a crazy person. That's a really important thing to point out. If it does, don't worry about it. You can take girth measurements where you're measuring with a tape measure all around different parts of your body. You can do um, skin fold measurements with a caliper. If you can find someone who is you know, really seasoned at that and has done that a lot and can take relatively accurate measurements, you can also take pictures from the front, back, and side. They tell a lot. One thing that's really important with your pictures though is you want them to be consistent. You want them to be in the same outfit, in the same room, at the same time of day, generally first thing in the morning after you've used the restroom and you want them to be from the same angle so you can get a lot of consistency there. The other thing you can do is go based on how your clothes are fitting. I tell a lot of women to find a pair of jeans or maybe a skirt that's a little bit too tight and try it on every couple weeks and you'll notice that it gets looser over time. I had a client recently who was only down two pounds with me but she was down 24 inches and you could see the huge different difference in her pictures and if she hadn't you know been taking other measurements besides the scale she would think that she hadn't been making any progress and would be feeling really demotivated so that's a good way that you can measure that type of progress the other thing is to measure how you're doing in the gym how are your lifts going you know are you getting stronger that's a really fantastic way to stay motivated as well you can also measure health markers like your blood pressure or you know how much energy you have how your sleep is going there are lots of other measures of progress beyond just aesthetics. So when it comes to where you should take girth measurements, truly it doesn't matter that much where specifically you're taking them as long as you're really consistent with it. And obviously the more measures that you're taking, the better. Say you just measured around like your bust and your hips. Well, if those aren't changing very much, maybe you're losing a lot of size around your waist. If you don't take that waist measurement, you won't know. So what I generally have my clients do is have measure them right around their shoulders, about two inch down from the top of their shoulders. I'll have them measure their bust right around the nipple. I'll have them measure at their sternum right under their breasts. I'll have them measure in the middle of their arm, about halfway between their elbow and the top of their shoulder. I'll have them measure the smallest part of their waist, their belly button, the largest part of their glutes and their hips, and then halfway between uh, down the thigh, between the knee and the top of the hip. Again, it doesn't really matter that much where exactly you're measuring. If you wanted to measure at the top of the thigh, that's totally fine, as long as you're consistent every time. 
In general, if my clients are okay with weighing themselves, I'll have them take their scale weight once a week. I have them generally take girth measurements every two weeks and I have them take pictures every four. This gives us a really clear indicator of the type of progress that they're making. I generally don't have my clients do the skin fold measurements with calipers simply because it's really difficult to find a practitioner who can do them accurately. In addition, I have my clients log their energy levels, their mood, their sleep level, and their strength level. Because I think it's really important to note that all of those things matter when it comes to your progress. So say for example, you've been doing a program for eight weeks and for the first six weeks you were making great progress, but for the last two, you haven't made much, aesthetically at least. Well, if you go back and look at your energy levels, for example, or your sleep levels, maybe those were ex exceptionally low the last couple weeks. And one of the things that we know is it's gonna be really hard to lose body fat if you're sleep deprived. Not only are your hormones gonna be out of whack, but you're not gonna have as much energy for your workout, so you're not gonna be able to expend as many calories in the gym or really push yourself. So we know that when your sleep levels are off that it's gonna hinder body fat loss. So in addition to logging progress regarding your aesthetics, it's super important to log your strength training progress as well. One issue that I see with a lot of women is that if they don't log their progress and log how much weight they're using, they'll continue to use the same weight day after day, week after week. And that's not how you get stronger and continue to make progress in the gym. So it's really important to know how much weight you're using for how many reps and how exactly it feels so that you can continue to push yourself. Now keep in mind, when you are going up in weight, you should always leave one to two reps in the hole so that you can stay safe while still challenging yourself. And keeping one to two reps in the hole means that if you think you could do 10 and that would be your absolute max, you're gonna use that weight for eight or nine. An example would be, say you're doing like dumbbell bench press and you're nailing the 30s for three sets of eight. Well, it's time to go up to the 35s. And maybe you can't do the 35s for three sets of eight, but maybe you get one set of eight with the 35s and then you get you know, one set of six or seven with the 35s and then you feel like you need to go back down to the 30s and you're able to nail that for a set of eight. If you didn't know that three sets of eight with 30 was challenging, but that you could do a little bit more, you might never progress up to the 35s. So tracking your progress over time, whether it's aesthetics or performance, is really important to continually make progress. Mm -hmm.